obviously there's BD UK and procurements going on and that's a painful process as we all know. Really. Well it's often it can people oh, don't mind the camera. Can people who fly outside of the um, area invest in it as well? They are doing Walter as where's Walter? Yeah. yeah, he's invested. He, he, we, know, we can't get to him. No matter how good we are, because we can't get to Surrey. Yeah, because well, I was thinking of like the, the Skype being a, a key one that we found being, as being something that really impressed older people, won't say in touch with family once they do move away. We've got mm. similar things where you've got relatives who live in the city and you can't necessarily afford to take part in the scheme or fully take part in the scheme. And can, can their relatives so find out as well? Well, my, my idea, because I'm obviously, you know, the bit about phase four is a joke. I don't expect Barn to try and get up here at all because we have our own solutions. Uh, I'm, if I invest 1,500 quid, for instance, I can choose a property, say a holiday cottage, that wouldn't otherwise be connected because if you've only got, did you say 18 weeks a year occupancy? Yeah. Right, so you might not find it a viable proposition to do your holiday cottage if you've only got an occupancy of 18 weeks a year. I can pick a holiday cottage and say, that's the one I want connected with my foundation membership and I want a discount so I can come and have a busman's holiday and right occasionally. Mm. And that'll save me being kidnapped and having to spend three days on her farm. <laughs> <laughs> you love it, it's the only time you get fed. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the potential for anybody, I mean, there's no reason why people in the States or wherever invest and to help this sort of project, as we've seen with the pub, the Butcher's Arms in Crosby Road yeah, yeah. Um, and various other pubs, Heskett Newmarket, you know, a percentage of the investors from that are from nowhere near England, quite often that they have a, an affinity with the Lake District or they came here as a child. Or, so there's a lot of external investors in some of the community pubs and there's no reason why this is any different. Uh, with your Skype thing, one of the communities we went to, Arcombe Parish, uh, their parish meeting, the doctor said, I want to do Dr. Skype. And he said, I've got a good connection at Kirby, Lonsdale, which can do Skype calls, but my patients can't do it because none of them have a good enough connection. And he said, I want to be able to see them and I want them to be able to see me and see that I'm looking at them when they're showing me their aching arm or the, the boil or whatever they want to show me. He said, that's what I want it for. And everybody thought, oh, what's he on about? You know, and, and they really booked up and our comes come on leaps and bounds with that one man saying that one thing. It, you've got to find what gels your community, really. And they Skype or what the heck it is. With the farmers, it's webcams. They see wireless webcams as a way of getting their insurance premiums down so that they put a wireless webcam on their quad bike because they're always getting nicked or the diesel tank because they're always getting nicked. So the farmers are thinking, oh yeah, I mean, they don't want to sit at the computer all day tweeting or Facebooking. <laughs> so they think, oh, I don't need a connection. What do I need a connection for? And the wife says, well, we do actually need a connection. How do you think we're going to get all these things in the bat and the car things? Um, but they'll say, oh, well, the two meg will do us. The government will get us two meg or we'll get a satellite. And the, then you have to say to them, well, do you really want to pay for all that excess charges when your kids are watching iPlayer on a satellite? And... Uh, but then when you tell them about wireless webcams and reducing their insurance premiums, you think, oh, well, it's worth it just for that. And the money you can save online, I save 400 quid just finding the right burners for me old Raven cooker, 40 years old. But I found them, and I found them 400 pounds cheaper than Raven would supply them. Well, that paid my year's connection, didn't it? Getting parishes and everybody to work together so you have sufficient numbers. I mean, talking earlier about um, being 19 kilometres from the exchange and having 11 houses, etc, etc, it becomes quite difficult to justify a business place at that point. And in persuading everybody to work together to make sure that the business case stacks up, sort of have a lead into probably the most important thing of today, in a way, for me, has been partnership and collaboration, getting the knowledge from wherever it is, whether it's international, and you know, some of the things that Donny told me when I was in America last year just blew my mind, ways to do things. Um, wherever the expertise is, John and his fibre stuff, ITS, um, and their knowledge, but also the local knowledge and the councils, you know, getting everybody to work together, I think that partnership angle is hugely important.
And it sort of comes down to each of us as individuals to work that out. Even consultants, James. <laughs> I, you, but I want you to say a little bit about what's happening in Northumberland, because that's a really deeply rural area. Okay. Um, it's a bit difficult to say what's going on, because there isn't very much going on. Um, the project that I'm, that everyone is so impressed with, that I'm doing, which let's face it, deliver hopefully two megabit per second to places that haven't got it, that is nicely stormed by the European Commission, who have been asking me the same stupid questions for many months now, probably almost a year. Um, I think I finally finished with them. I think that next week we might actually be allowed to finally submit a notification, which basically means it's rubber stamped and it's done. To this day, eh? That's to state aid so that we can actually spend the money that DEFRA promised me about 18 months ago. Um, which is good. I think it's one of the first DEFRA projects actually to do anything when we finally do. But that obviously is only a small amount of money and it only does the, you know, the basic two megabit. Um, what we're then looking at is there are places like Fontburn that are beyond the reach of what we're trying to do. They have um, a community network which what I'm doing would nicely cut in half. So that would destroy the community network. So we're trying to find other ways of doing that and talking with various um, people like Fujitsu, BT, etc. in terms of how we might deliver that. But also they've got the, the, the water authority there which will act as a sort of um, to the company to, to found that. So there are bits pieces and pieces going on in terms of that community level. Then there's the good old Be the UK, don't worry you pretty little heads about it, we'll, we'll do it all for you. Um, and they have so far failed to put in a um, plan to Be the UK. They have been promised about 7 million which they're really annoyed about because they cannot work out how the hell anyone sorts about 7 million when Cumbria is getting 17, um, what Devon and Somerset have got 30, um, and so we don't know quite how we're going to do that. Also, you know, little things like how are we going to match that? The whole of the country around BB UK is certainly the, anything north of the trend, which is the only bit I'm really that interested in. Um, this is, well, how are we going to find the match funding for that? Down in the South East, they say, okay, we'll just spend it. Um, places in the rural areas, which is what BDUK is for, they've got to come up with match funding. Um, in the northwest, they're looking at, okay, that's, that's fine, um, we'll sort out our ERDF funding so that we can spend that on broadband, which I think they're in the middle of doing. Um, everybody else saying, no, it's not in the ERDF operational plan, it's too difficult to take that back to Brussels and change it, so we haven't got ERDF so we haven't got any money, so the BD UK money looks a bit like a shallow promise because we can't match it, so we can't spend it. Um, I think that's a reasonable rundown of the kind of progress that we've got in our thumb. See, Cumbria is so clear to chuck in the pot, which they've... Yes, we heard this morning more. about Cumbria's extra 7.7 7 or whatever it is. Oh, yeah. So that's from overperformance, whatever overperformance Makes you wonder how the underperforming. Yeah. It does look sad. <laughs> no, they'll take ours back. They'll take ours back. But we <laughs> matched ours by valuing Clio cannily at 17 million quid. So until the 6.8 came along, we we were balanced. Whereas obviously, if you don't have a local education network like Clio, language is just given there somewhere. Yeah, we've just given. Language is just yeah. given there somewhere. But then, in terms of how you match these, you know, the the, the BDUK money, a lot of the. Councils seem to be taking an interesting approach to that. Interesting, I mean, in the sort of consultant speak for DIM. Um, <laughs> the, they're saying, oh, what, can, what imaginary money can we, can we find? I'll have to tweet that. I'll have to go. I'll have to, I've got to go out. Hey, if you do that, I'll tweet the fact that I, I, won't, I, won't, I won't say it was you. That I ended up sitting on the back seat of a bus next to Chris Condor, which I don't think well, you can do that if you want. <laughs> So they're saying, well, what imaginary money can we use to match the BDUK money? Which 
they seem to think is, is, is being the answer to something. The reality is that being a UK money is not enough to do what we want to do. So I've got sort of councillors that I'm working with around the place saying, okay, how do we work out what BD UK had in mind so that we can in, do the infrastructure in the way they had it so they'll give us the money and match against that? And I'm trying to say, well, why don't you actually work out where you want it, what the community actually wants, and then as you know, elected representatives of that community, find a way of doing what they want you to do. Which seems to be a bit sort of radical to, to uh, a few of these. Business work. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, all this sort of uh, where can we find imagining money to match against BD UK is completely missing the point that BD UK money is not enough. They need to find real money to match against that, to actually employ the likes of BT, Fujitsu, etc. Well, I mean, my argument is that there's no signal. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, right, with Jim Southwich was um, at the Stony Brook event, was why aren't small businesses like mine, who've gone from being a top 10 internet marketing company in 2002 to not even on the radar because I can't compete because I don't have a book recognition, why don't you ask me what I might invest? Because Cumbria, for instance, has the highest number of SMEs in total in the country. And no one's asking me what it's worth to my business, and every single farm is a business. And you know, every homeowner who runs a business from home, putting in a fiber optic connection is better value than building a conservatory if it adds four to five percent in your house. Um, you know, I, I don't even want a conservatory, I want fiber through my window frame. So, um, I think there's been a huge lack of if you could possibly take this back to county, um, a huge lack of looking around at where the assets are within the yeah. county to say, well, hang on a minute, we've got X number of farms and we've got all these small businesses who potentially, if, if someone asked me to invest 1,500 quid, I, I write it off against tax. It's, you know, I've just spent it, it's like buying a really fancy printer. It's, well, you know, an iPad times three, because obviously, you know, I need that many. And, uh, but, but nobody's asking small businesses. I suppose on that front, I would say that one thing that is going on in Northumberland that's interesting is the Northumberland National Park Authority who do understand this. Um, the English National Park Authority saw somewhere that the select committee for the culture, media and sport one would have been asked if they wanted to say anything about Ofcom's um, auction of the 4G spectrum, um, particularly with regard to rural areas, which I think is what came up on their search. Yeah. And they thought, oh, that looks important. <coughs> Don't understand it. Still, Northumberland, they're our telecoms lead. So we got onto the chief executive of the Northumberland National Park Authority, and they said, do we want to comment on this? And he said, that looks important. Don't understand it. So finally they got through to me with three days left to go before the deadline and said, um, there's this Ofcom report somewhere, which I found was about 150 pages, 200 pages of annexes. And they said, um, can you do a comment on that? And they said, yeah, when by? Monday. Oh, okay. So I finally found the flaw in their argument on annex six um, and explained it to them and wrote the um, submission that you have to do in the format for the select committee. The chief executive looked at it and thought, I don't understand the word of that, that's probably right. Yeah. <laughs> Sent it to um, the chief executive of the English National Parks, who I think said, I don't understand the word of that, I think it's probably right. And as far as I can tell, it went to the staff <coughs> committee who then thought, I didn't understand the word of that, I think it's right. Let's just put it through as it is. Uh, and Ofcom had been stopped, I think, um, because Funnily enough, their, their economic argument for how 4G was going to work in rural communities was wrong. It didn't work. And it was well, we to could have told them that. There aren't enough antennas. There's not enough mass. There's not enough feed to the mass. Nobody will put enough feed into the rural areas because we're not worth it. There's a, That's the there was, there was, yes, there's the technical flaw, there's not enough infrastructure, which um, sort of Rory was going about. And there never um, will there's be. There's the economic flaw of it's not shared between the different operators anyway. Mm -hmm. So one operator does all right, so the others mm -hmm. just you know, fade. Yeah, fade. Mm -hmm. um, so th there are some interesting things going in. Lens, I say, but, you know, the park authority is perhaps not where you'd expect 
but not the sort of the, the public sector lead on this today, but it's only in Northumberland, and that's where it's coming from. Was it Northumberland water that was recently bought by Japanese businessmen? Chinese. Chinese, Chinese. Yeah, yeah. under that, yes. I haven't yet, but we are talking to, the, um, to them because they're... Funny enough, they're part of our wireless scheme. Yeah, yeah but you see, that reservoir, wireless and water don't mix. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's right. th that's a temporary yeah. thing. We're hopefully going to sort out. We're emptying the reservoir, aren't you? Nothing else beyond popcorn. They couldn't actually provide any kind of internet link for their fishing lodge, so they couldn't operate their automatic um, fishing lodge. Yeah. 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 Yeah.